All right, so there we have it. We have four of the vodka ones, one of the spiced rum. Hello, everybody. Oh my heavens. It is cold today. Yesterday, it was like a little cool, but not nearly what it is today. I think yesterday, was, you know, I would say it felt like it was maybe in the high 60s, low 70s. But man, today, you guys, the weather dropped to 40 degrees, feels like 34. And does it ever feel like 34 degrees? It is so stinking cold and it is supposed to drop down to the low 20s tonight. Um, hopefully this is just going to be like a day or two and not like the foreseeable future because this is not my kind of weather. Um, I Summer is fine, but it's a little bit too hot during summer. But spring, that is the prime, prime uh, season for me. But my husband just got back from picking up um, a bale of hay and coming out to check on all the little babies. We are still at um, eight ducklings and I think uh, three chicks, right? Yeah, because everybody them. Yeah, the three, not everybody, it's just something, something oh. is taking the, the chicks and the ducklings. So we've had some mishaps, um, some or unfortunate mishaps with uh, the animals, but um, you know, when they're outside and free ranging, yeah. Sometimes that's, you know, just yeah, nature of the game. And unfortunately, we just don't know what it is exactly that has been taking them. Here is Mama Hen. And they seem nice and cozy. And then all the little ducklings are just hanging out. There's the eighth one right there. But they've been getting me in trouble a little bit. I had to go over to the neighbor's house yesterday because all of the ducklings and mama duck were in the neighbor's chicken coop. So I had to get all of these uh, ducklings. Ducklings or get mama mad at me. Mama duck is gonna come chase you. Maybe. Uh, dad, dang it. What? I I'm wanting to jump on you. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, do it You're getting tall. What? You're getting taller. Thanks. Oh. With the time change, it gets dark really early around here. So they get fed around 4.15 or so. Oh, you're eating me. Um, Because it gets dark at 5 o'clock. Why are you guys both eating me? Why there is a time change in central time zones, I have no idea. I can understand why there's a time change in, you know, eastern time zones because they get a lot of daylight um, and they are an hour ahead of us. So when it's five o'clock here, it's six o'clock there. Um, but for us to get a time change in the central time zones, I will I will never understand that. Because for it to get dark at, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous to me. Hey, handsome boy. You probably want to come in, huh? You need to be covered. You're so furry right now. Everybody's getting their winter coats in. When I'm not used to them being so fluffy, and then all of a sudden the cold weather gets here and they are just so fluffy. So fluffy. He's such a good boy, you guys. If you don't know who this is, if you're new to the channel, this is Zeke. He is a mini Zebu, and he's not gonna get much bigger than this. Um, maybe a little bit bigger, but he shouldn't get too, too big. His horns will grow, but um, as long as he behaves himself with those horns, then he won't be getting them removed. But if he starts acting like a butthead, then we will either 
possibly like rubber band his horns because I prefer animals with no horns. He's getting mad at me. He does not want me petting him. What is wrong with you? Huh? What is the matter? You're mad? Did I make you mad? How did I make you mad? Oh, you're pooping. That's why. Oops. Guess I bothered him while he was pooping. Typically, he's a good boy. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to be bothered when I'm going to the bathroom either, you know. Abby's doing really good. Hi, Abby. She's such a good baby. This girl just absolutely loves attention. She loves it. She's such a sweetheart. Aren't ya? Now, Abby has little horns growing in, too. Uh, the we should have, um, we should have disputed Abby when she was a newborn calf. Um, oh, but, unfortunately, we thought that she might not have horns because we didn't feel anything. Um, but she does have horns growing. So, um, we may put bands around her horns. Um, or my husband said he still might try to burn them off. I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. Kids are ruining the hay bale. Oh, oh, climb, come on. Nope. All right, that's enough. You guys are, well, you better ask daddy first if it's okay before you continue with that. Cause that's a lot of hay coming off. You guys would never believe it, but there is two piggies in there. Not quite sure where the other one is, but they're underneath that hay somewhere. With days like this, pigs like to stay extremely warm. So they need a lot of this hay to just kind of make little huts in there to keep themselves warm. That one's in there eating the hay, which is fine. And then Chubbs just got a bunch of hay also. And he seems to be eating the hay as well. Not making himself a little house yet, but he will. <laughs> Hazel's getting all fluffy. She's a fluff, fluffy girls. Oh. These are, they're getting so fluffy. <laughs> Look at my pretty girl. She's so pretty. She's my pretty girl. They're all pretty. They're all pretty babies. Oh my gosh. And then, although Ruby has her own hay, she would much rather eat Piper's hay. Piper's getting nice and fluffy, too. Fluffy girls. Ruby said she doesn't have enough hay. Although, look, Ruby's hay is full. I don't have enough hay. I don't have enough hay. Aw, huh, you need more? Ruby, she's such a good girl. All of our girls are so sweet. Such sweet girls. Aww. Ruby's our character. Ruby is the one that sometimes likes to show her teeth and makes really funny faces. I haven't seen it in a little while, but um, she does love to make really cute little faces. Don't tell anyone. Oh, no, she's not. 
Is She's she... my favorite adult goat out of the it's, two. Oh, out of the two, really? Yeah. Oh, poor Piper. No, I love Piper too. Don't, 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 I love Piper too. Come here, Piper. Piper says, I heard what you just said about me. I heard that, you know. That's not really nice. But she is sweet. She's a sweet girl. And she deserves a snack. The heat lamp that's on the outside of the door is for the ducks and ducklings. They sleep in the barn. Oof. Look at this one with the hay on her head. You've got hay on your head? How'd you get all that hay on your head? Huh? Dirty girl. And of course, like I said in the last video, it is now muck season. So, yay. So excited for this time of the year. Or the muck never goes away because it's too cold. So for about the last six months, <laughs> I have been wanting to make something um, and I have just been procrastinating it and putting it off. And it is one of the easiest things that you could possibly make. And I still have not done it yet. Why? I'm not really quite too sure, but um, we're going to do it today. Also in the garden today, even though it's completely freezing outside, I don't know what enticed me to do it. I decided to sow some parsnips um, back along the, the fence line here. We did some parsnips. Of course, I have my collards and more um, cabbage. I have some more broccoli growing over here. So I thought it would be nice to just do like a full straight row of broccoli and then in front of that, I believe I did cauliflower and some cabbage there and then celery all the way to the end, practically like right there. So that'll be kind of exciting. I can't wait to see if they even sprout. And then my, my green stock is looking really nice, you guys. Really happy with um, my basil still doing really well. This one's starting to take off again. I don't know if these are going to last through a frost. Um, we'll see. I know the oregano will, um, and most of this other stuff will because it's all frost hardy, like the lettuces and stuff like that. And they are just really starting to grow. Um, so, and this is spinach. This one in here is spinach, but it looks like it's uh, kind of struggling a little bit. We'll just put it back in there. But we got lettuce and kale. We got all kinds of wonderful lettuces. And of course, all of these are still doing really, really well. We got kale and broccoli. Um, I put some, oh, you could tell, you could always tell when the chickens have been in here because the chickens make a mess. Uh, but that's broccoli. I believe this is cauliflower and then another broccoli over there. This is from springtime. Um, there is some more broccoli in through this area. We've got kale in the front here. I planted some carrots in between the kale and the... Um, I want to say that that is... Uh, I think that might be cauliflower. And then I did some uh, radish. We have some cherry radishes that I put in and also some breakfast radishes. So that's gonna go along the side here. And then I also put some um, more carrots in here and also some onions. And then along here, we did some cabbage. So I should have some cabbage that comes up. And then on this side, I put some beets and turnips. So we got beets, turnips, parsnips. Um, I really wish I had some rutabaga, but I don't. Um, but I am going to order some seeds. But by the time I get it, it'll probably be way too late. So unfortunately, I'm not going to get any rutabaga. But not that I eat a lot of rutabaga, but... 
I really do love rutabaga and parsnips and turnips in stews, like a really good vegetable based stew. Um, my grandmother used to make a dish called couscous and I don't know if you know what that is, but it is a Mediterranean dish and couscous is a very itty bitty grain. Um, it's smaller than rice. It's kind of like the size of um, bulgur wheat or tabbouleh if you've ever eaten tabbouleh. The grain is about that size I would say, but the texture is a little different than that. Um, it's a really, really nice grain. I have no idea what the nutritional um, information is on that, but it's a really good grain and it's really amazing for winter. And I wish my grandmother um, showed me how to make that dish, but I am going to actually look up a recipe, but I know that she used to put like, uh, like I said, rutabaga, parsnips, turnips, Maybe not so much the parsnips, but I know she put turnips, carrots, cabbage. My mom said that she used to put chicken, lamb, and beef in it. So I'm not 100% sure about that. I trust my mom, but I really, I used to watch my grandmother cook all the time. Like that was my thing. We used to watch cooking shows together. Um, and I just don't ever remember her putting lamb and beef in it. But... Anyways, I'm going to look up some recipes, not today, but that's something that I want to do in the future. So hopefully some, maybe by next fall, I'll be able to get some of that stuff growing and really make just a really good couscous because I'm looking forward to that. My mom's supposed to be here for Thanksgiving um, and she said that she would try to make some with me. So we'll see if we can get the recipe right this year. If not this year, we'll try again next year. But for right now, let's go make some vanilla extract. All right, you guys, so I said this is super easy. Like, it is ridiculous easy. The only thing is there are so many different varieties of vanilla beans that you can get. So they come from Mexico, India, uh, Madagascar, you name it, just all over the place. Um, but the ones that I ended up getting, I got the Madagascar. I don't know if you guys can see that. But these are, um, it's a Madagascar bourbon vanilla bean. There are 26 to a package. Um, these are from a company called Fit and Clean. And it's just super, super simple. So what you're going to need is vanilla beans. You're going to need some, I'm just going to use some pint-sized jars. And then I also had one smaller jar, which I'm going to need um, because I am very limited in one of my um, ingredients that I need for this. The only other thing you need is a vodka. Buying the cheapest vodka is absolutely fine. You don't need to go crazy and buy like Grey Goose or something like that. But if you want to, you could. It's totally up to you, whatever you feel like doing. But I just went and grabbed the cheapest of the cheapest because we're going to be using a lot of this. Um, probably the whole bottle. Go cheap on this, guys. Another thing you can do um, to change the flavor just a little bit in your um, vanilla extract, most people use vodka, um, but you could use rum, and you can also use a spice rum. I had a little bit of spice rum that was in my cabinet. Gosh, this has probably been in there for like five years, to be honest with you. Um, I don't drink much at all. And I'm going to use this little bit that's in here. And I'm going to put that into this smaller jar here. But that's all you need. Either rum, vodka, you can use clear rum, spiced rum, whatever. But let me just go ahead and show you what we're going to do. Okay, hey, so basically, we're just going to open up the package here. We're going to take three per jar and then for my smaller jar I'm only going to put two and then we're going to cut these in half and slice it that way that the vanilla beans are exposed and will allow the flavor to get into the jars easier. If you want to score them down the center first to expose the vanilla bean and then cut them in half you can do that as well. The only thing is sometimes I feel like you lose some of the vanilla beans, so I like to cut them in half first and then score them. 
Now we're gonna add the alcohol. And with this one, because I didn't have enough in the bottle, we're not doing a one inch head space. But as you'll see, when we get to the vodka, we're gonna leave a one inch head space at the top of the jar. We actually had enough alcohol to do four pint sized jars. And then we're gonna add three vanilla beans to each of the jar. It's gonna look like we're doing a little bit more just because we cut them in half. When you slice them down the middle, you wanna be really careful, but then you wanna make sure that you split the vanilla bean in half to expose all of those wonderful beans. All right, so there we have it. We have four of the vodka ones, one of the spiced rum. You do wanna make sure that you label on the top and date it so you know. I'm gonna go ahead and get these labeled. You can see that the color is already changing a little bit. So you just wanna make sure that you mix it up like maybe once a day or so, you know, up and down like I just did. Just go like that like once a day. So you see how that one's already kind of turning a, like a beigey color. And then in about four to six weeks, you can go ahead and use it. And then the longer it lasts, like I said, the um, stronger it will become and the less you will use. So a little bit will go a long, long ways. I hope you guys enjoyed this super easy, super quick vanilla extract recipe. Let me know if you use this recipe down below and thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Until next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.